Pi. Today we will learn Chapter 10, Wave Properties of Particle. In this topic we have two subtopics. First, de Broglie Wavelength. Here we are going to state wave-particle duality. Then we use de Broglie Wavelength Equation. However, the usage for this equation will be discussed in the tutorial classes. The next subtopic is about describe the observations of electron diffraction in Davis and Germer experiment. Then, explain wave behavior of electron in an electron microscope. Here, we relate de Broglie wavelength of electron with the resolving power of the microscope. Finally, we state the advantage of electron microscope compared to optical microscope. Now we are going to focus on the first subtopic. Here, you will be introduced to particles and waves. In classical physics, long long time ago, there are sharp distinction between particles and waves. We can say a particle is object like ball, bullets, electron, proton and neutron. A particle must have mass, and must obey Newton's law. The particle in motion will have momentum. As for waves, the waves have wavelength. They are massless which means they have no mass and undergo phenomenon of interference and diffraction. Years later, in quantum physics, the scientists found that there are blurs in distinction between particle and waves. Where, lights that travel as photon can act as wave and properties. So, which model is correct? Is the light is a wave or is a particle? The answer is it depends on the phenomenon being observed. For example, in Chapter 8, the evidence has shown that, light has the wave nature, where we can see the interference and diffraction phenomenon in Young's double slit experiment and diffraction grating experiment. However, in Chapter 9, from photoelectric experiment, we look at light acts as a particle. The photoelectric effect tells us the photons are quantized. They are travel in discrete unit. How Wave Particle Duality is Introduced Around 1924, a new kind of physics based on synthesis of wave and quantum idea was introduced. The new theory, called as quantum mechanics attempts to combine, the particle properties and wave properties, into a single consistent description, that is wave-particle duality. Max Planck was the originator of quantum theory of light. Light behaves as a particle. Louis de Broglie was the originator of the wave-particle duality of matter. De Broglie's proposed that matter exhibits both wave and particles properties. If particles such as electrons had waves properties, under the correct conditions, they should exhibit diffraction effect. So as a conclusion we can say that wave-particle duality is the phenomenon, where, under certain circumstances a particle exhibits wave properties, and under other conditions a wave exhibits particle properties but we cannot observe both aspects of its behavior simultaneously. Louis de Broglie has proposed that, the relationship between momentum and wavelength, of any particle, is the same as the photon given as, the de Broglie wavelength is equal, to the ratio of Planck's constant, h to the momentum. According to quantum theory, energy of photon is, energy, e is equal to Planck's constant, h time frequency is equal to h, c, over lambda. According to Einstein's theory of special relativity, we can see that, energy is equal to the m times c square. By the equation from, quantum theory and Einstein theory, we can get, h times c over lambda is equal to m times c square. We cancel the c on both sides, then, the equation will be, h over lambda is equal to m times c, we know that the velocity of photon is equal to c. Therefore, the equation for photon now, is lambda equal to h over p. Please keep in mind, that we can calculate the momentum, p for photon but, we cannot determine the mass for photon, since the photon is massless. As for electron, the equation for electron is a lambda is equal to h over m time v. Here, for electron, we can calculate both momentum and mass. From equation lambda equals h over p, we can can conclude that, lambda is the property of wave, and the momentum is the property of particle. 
Here, is the relationship, between the voltage applied, with the accelerating voltage, velocity of electron and the wavelength. We can use this equation, when, the velocity of electron is controlled by, the voltage between cathode and anode. U, is the potential energy, to accelerate electron, is equal to K, the kinetic energy, of the electron. Substitute U, with E, and V, and K, with half M, time V, square. Rearrange the equation, until you get equation 1. Then, substitute the equation 1 with equation 2, that is a lambda equal to h, over m, time v. Until we get equation lambda is equal to h, over surge 2, m, e time v. We also know that, e time v is equal to k. So, we can substitute, this equation and get new equation, as shown here. Lambda equal to h over surge 2, m, time k. This is the summary for chapter 10. Wave properties of particle, for subtopic 10.1, and the equation involved. Hope it helps. Now, we are going to focus on subtopic 10.2, that is, electron diffraction. C. J. Davison and L. H. Germer, in the year 1927, carried out an experiment, popularly known as, Davison-Germer experiment, to explain, the wave nature of electrons, through electron diffraction, which the discovery was actually made by an accident. The two physicists, C. J. Davison and L. H. Germer, carried out electron diffraction experiment, to prove the de Broglie relationship. The figure below, shows a tube, for demonstrating electron diffraction, by Davison and Germer. A beam of accelerated electrons, from a heated filament, strikes on a layer of graphite, which, is extremely thin, and a diffraction pattern, consisting of ring, S is seen on the tube face. This experiment proves that, the de Broglie relation was right, and the wavelength, of the electron is given by, lambda is equal to, h over m, time v. If the velocity, of electrons is increased, the rings, are seen to become narrower, showing that, the wavelength of electrons, decreases with increasing velocity, as predicted by de Broglie. The velocity, of electrons are controlled, by the applied voltage v, across anode and cathode. From equation, u, equal to k. We substitute u, equal to e, time v, and kinetic equation. Then we will get equation 2, that is, the velocity, v, is equal to sur 2, time e, time v, divided by m. By substituting equation 1, and equation 2, then, we will get equation, lambda is equal to h divided by sur 2, time m, time e, time v. Please read the extra notes here. First, electrons are not the only particles which behave as waves. Second, the diffraction effects are less noticeable, with more massive particles, because their momenta, are generally much higher, and so the wavelength is correspondingly shorter. Last but not least, the diffraction of the particles are observed, when the wavelength, is of the same order as the spacing between plane of the atom. Here is about an electron microscope. A practical device, that relies, on the wave properties of electrons is, electron microscope. It is similar, to optical compound microscope, in many aspects. The advantage of the electron microscope, over the optical microscope is, the resolving power of the electron microscope, is much higher than, that of an optical microscope. This is because, the electrons can be accelerated, to a very high kinetic energy, giving them, a very short wavelength, lambda, typically 100 times shorter, than those of visible light. Therefore, the diffraction effect, of electrons, as a wave, is much less than that of light. As a result, electron microscopes, are able to distinguish, 
details about 100 times smaller. In operation, a beam of electrons falls on a thin slice of sample. The sample, or specimen, to be examined must be very thin, or a few micrometers, to minimize the effects, such as absorption or scattering of the electrons. The electron beam is controlled by electrostatic or magnetic lenses to focus the beam to an image. The image is formed on a fluorescent screen. There are two types of electron microscopes. The first one is the transmission that produces a two-dimensional image. The second one is scanning that produces images with a three-dimensional quality. Figure 1 and Figure 2 are diagram of the transmission electron microscope and the scanning electron microscope. As conclusion, an electron microscope is a microscope that uses an electron beam to create an image of the target. The wave behavior of electron in an electron microscope are First, the beam of electron is diffracted after passing through the target or specimen. Second, the higher resolving power is the ability to see detail, which can be achieved with electron microscope because the Nabrogli wavelength for electron are so much smaller. Finally, the shorter wavelength of the electron can be determined by applying high accelerating voltage. The electron is then accelerated to a very high kinetic energy. In mathematical statement, we can see that lambda is inversely proportional to the V velocity of electron. The higher the velocity, the shorter is the wavelength. The resolving power is inversely proportional to the lambda. When the lambda is shorter, then the resolving power is higher which means we can see a more detailed image here we can see the differences or the comparison between electron microscope and optical microscope also known as light microscope Please focus only on electron microscope that have been circled with red color. Here, we can see the how details is the image we can see from electron microscope compared to the image seen from the optical microscope. That's all for today. Bye. See you next time.